So almost as soon as World War II ends, we move into a period known as the Cold War. The Cold War is the name given to the rocky relationship and the battle of political philosophies primarily between the USA and the USSR after World War II. The Cold War was not fought head-to-head -head between these countries, but through other countries, through proxies. So when we talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Korean conflict, the Vietnam War, Hungary, and the Berlin Wall, just some examples, uh, we're talking about the events of the Cold War. For many, the growth in weapons of mass destruction, or nuclear weapons, was the scariest issue during this time. The superpowers, the USA and the USSR, used spying, propaganda, diplomacy, and secret operations in their dealings with each other. Much of the world allied with one side or the other. In fact, until the Soviet Union finally broke up in 1991, the Cold War dictated not only U.S. and Soviet foreign policy, but influenced world alliances as well. The history of the United States and the Soviet Union had been rocky from the start. The U.S. wouldn't even recognize the Soviet Union as a country in 1917. It wouldn't be until 1933 that the U.S. finally would. Even during the war as allies in World War I and II, uh, the U.S. and Britain were shocked and upset that Stalin would enter into a non-aggression pact with Hitler. And Stalin was upset that the Allies had not invaded Europe sooner to take the pressure off the Russian front. So by the end of the war, relations between the two grew rocky, with suspicion and distrust throughout. The Cold War would be fought in Poland and Germany, Vietnam and Korea. It would be fought in Afghanistan and in countries throughout Central and South America but it would never be directly fought between the U.S. and the USSR, in part for fear of an all-out global nuclear war, destroying not just the two countries involved, but the world. The war was not yet over in February 1945, but the leaders of the United States, Britain, and the Soviet Union met at the Soviet Black Sea Resort of Yalta. While there, they agreed to, number one, divide Germany into zones of occupation controlled by the Allied military forces. Two, Germany would also have to pay the Soviet Union to compensate for its loss of life and property. Three, Stalin agreed to join the war against Japan. And four, he also promised that Eastern Europeans would have free elections. A skeptical Winston Churchill predicted that Stalin would keep his pledge only if Eastern Europeans followed a policy that was friendly to Russia. And that certainly turned out to be the case. the United Nations. Creation of the United Nations in June 1945, the United States and Soviet Union temporarily set aside their differences. They joined 48 other countries in forming the United Nations or the UN. This international organization was intended to protect the members against aggression. Although its first meetings were held in San Francisco, it was to be based in New York. The charter for the new peacekeeping organization established a large body called the General Assembly. There, each UN member nation could cast its vote on a broad range of issues. An 11 member body called the Security Council had the real power to investigate and settle disputes. Its five permanent members were Britain, China, France, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Other members rotated on a designated term. 
Each of those permanent members, though, could veto any Security Council action. So this provision was intended to prevent any members of the council from voting as a block to override the others. Although the U.S. and Soviet goals had agreements at Yalta and were on the Security Council of the U.N., they still split sharply on any number of issues after the war. The war had affected them differently. The United States, the world's rich, richest and most powerful country, suffered 400,000 deaths. The Soviets, on the other hand, suffered 50 million deaths. One in four Soviets was wounded or killed. The U.S. still had their cities and factories. Many Soviet cities were demolished. These two differing situations, as well as political and economic differences, affected the two countries' goals. Eastern Europe's Iron Curtain. A major goal of Soviet Union was to shield itself from another invasion from the, West, from the West. Centuries of history had taught the Soviets to fear invasion. If you remember, in the 17th century, the Poles captured Russia. During the next century, the Swedes attacked. Napoleon overran Moscow in 1812. The Germans invaded Russia during World Wars I and World War II. Stalin needed strong and friendly border nations to separate the Soviet Union from Western Europe to ensure there would never be another invasion of the mother country. Soviets built a buffer. During the final attacks on Germany during World War II, the Soviet troops pushed the Nazis back across Eastern Europe. At the war's end, these Soviet troops occupied a strip of countries along the Soviet Union's own western border. Stalin regarded these countries as a necessary buffer or a wall of protection. He ignored the promises he'd made at Yalta and installed and secured communist governments in Albania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Poland, and Yugoslavia. And you can see these countries here in the lighter shade on the map. The Soviet leader's American partner at Yalta, Franklin D. Roosevelt, had died in April, in April 1945. To Roosevelt's successor, Harry S. Truman, Stalin's reluctance to allow free elections in Eastern Europe was a clear violation of those countries' rights. Truman, Stalin, and Churchill met in Potsdam, Germany in July of 1945. There, Truman pressed Stalin to permit free elections in Eastern Europe, as he'd promised. The Soviet leader refused. In a speech in early 1946, Stalin declared that communism and capitalism could not exist in the same world. An Iron Curtain divides East and West. So Europe was now divided between East and West. Germany had split into two sections. The Soviets controlled the eastern part, including half of the capital, Berlin. Under a communist government, East Germany was named the German Democratic Republic. The western zones became the Federal Republic of Germany in 1949. Winston Churchill described the phrase or coined the phrase Iron Curtain in a speech in the United States at the University of Missouri. Iron Curtain came to represent Europe's division into mostly democratic Western Europe and communist Eastern Europe. 